In the summer of 1962, Cuba once again becomes the focus of international crisis. As a communist country 90 miles off the coast of the United States, Cuba relied heavily on Soviet aid and support. But now, Nikita Khrushchev and the Soviet Union were about to use Cuba as a tool to directly threaten the United States with nuclear war. Throughout the summer of 1962, Soviet ships delivered weapons to the Castro regime in Cuba. When the CIA learns of this new development, President Kennedy warns that the United States will not tolerate Soviet offensive weapons in Cuba. In secret, Kennedy and his cabinet prepare options to deal with the crisis. Some of his advisors suggest airstrikes against the weapon sites. Others advise a land invasion of Cuba. But the crisis deepens on October 14, 1962. U.S. spy planes photographed Soviet missile bases throughout Cuba. The Soviet missiles that were planted in Cuba were large enough to reach major U.S. cities along the eastern seaboard. In addition, the spy photos show that many of the missiles are armed already with nuclear warheads and were ready to launch at any moment. This put every major city along the east coast of the United States under the real threat of a potential nuclear attack. It also changes the game. If the United States attacks Cuba either by air or land in order to try to get the missiles out of the country, the Soviets could potentially retaliate by launching nuclear missiles against major U.S. cities. On October 22, 1962, President Kennedy addresses the nation from the Oval Office. In his televised address, he informs the American people that the Soviets have placed nuclear weapons in Cuba and they are capable of reaching major cities across the eastern seaboard. He brings to them the realization that these missiles could destroy U.S. cities within minutes and without any warning. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. But President Kennedy also issues a threat to the Soviets in this televised address. He promises mutual assured destruction if the Soviets launch an attack on the United States or any of its allies in the Western Hemisphere. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. All eyes around the world were now on the Soviet Union and the United States and what actions they would take next. The threat of nuclear war was so real that Americans everywhere really believed that they would die in the coming days in a nuclear attack. For six long days, the world faced the real possibility of nuclear annihilation. Kennedy and his cabinet met all day, each day, debating how to protect the country while trying to avoid a nuclear war with the Soviets. Finally, Kennedy decides on a naval quarantine of Cuba. To halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment under shipment to Cuba is being initiated. All ships of any kind bound for Cuba, from whatever nation or port, will if found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons be turned back. The United States sent massive naval forces to blockade the island, and they threatened to sink any Soviet ship bound for Cuba. This blockade was a time of great tension between the two rivals. Any small slip-up from one of the commanders on any of these ships could have led to a firefight leading to all-out nuclear war. With no direct contact between Kennedy and Khrushchev, they both relied on communication with the ships to get them through this crisis. When these Soviet ships finally reached the blockade, they turned around. Kennedy's resolve to keep nuclear weapons out of Cuba proved too much, and Khrushchev flinched. The United States had taken the upper hand on this extremely tense standoff. After almost two weeks of tension, the crisis was over. The world looked favorably on the U.S. response to the crisis, and Nikita Khrushchev lost prestige. President John F. Kennedy had proven his resolve and had finally shed the image that he was too young and too weak to lead the United States. Secretly, the two sides agreed on several things to end the crisis. First, the Soviets would dismantle and remove all weapons from Cuba immediately. Second, the United States agreed not to invade Cuba at any time. Third, the United States also agreed to secretly remove its nuclear weapons in Turkey. The American missiles in Turkey were equal distance to the Soviet Union that Cuba was to the United States. In the eyes of the two world leaders, the removal of the Soviet missiles in Cuba and the American missiles in Turkey were an equal trade-off and a first step towards world disarmament. In June of 1963, the United States and the Soviet Union agreed to establish a nuclear hotline. Both Kennedy and Khrushchev began to realize that accidental war was easy. This hotline would allow direct, immediate communication between the White House and the Kremlin, 
During the Cuban Missile Crisis, it had taken hours for each side to receive messages from the other. This could have disastrous consequences if one side had decided to change their mind at the last minute. This hotline was intended to prevent Cold War powers from mistakenly going over the brink. Also in 1963, the United States and the Soviet Union signed a limited test ban treaty. This treaty banned nuclear testing in the atmosphere, underwater, and even in outer space. The one location where nuclear testing was still allowed was underground. The added benefit of the treaty was its impact on the environment. When nuclear weapons were tested in the atmosphere or in outer space, they would rain down radioactive fallout upon the Earth. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a major foreign affairs victory for President Kennedy and the United States. It is still the closest the world has ever come to nuclear war. With the threat of mutual assured destruction at hand, cooler heads prevailed and worldwide nuclear annihilation was avoided. To historians, the Cuban Missile Crisis is one of the greatest achievements of the Kennedy administration.